In today's video, I'm going to go over the best camera settings for cinematic sports videos. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. What is up everyone? My name is Pete Gottschalk, content producer for Major League Baseball. Welcome back to the channel if you are returning and welcome if you are a new viewer. And as I mentioned today, I want to, to make a brief video about the best camera settings for making your sports videos more cinematic. I want to keep this brief and concise. I'm going to start off by just defining what cinematic means. Cinematic means of or relating to film or, or cinema, obviously. I hate that term, like I said, but y'all search for it a lot, which is why we're calling it that today. It's a very subjective term because a lot of content goes out on social media now, which is not, you know, the movies or cinema. So these filmmaking styles and, and things have evolved over time. We're gonna go over just the strict camera settings of what I have used in the past and, and pretty much what I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I shoot MLB games or other events because everything I think should look cinematic, whatever you want that to mean. First off, we're going to start off with aperture, which is also known as depth of field. And this is going to be very dependent upon what your lens situation is. If you are new to this game, to photography or cameras or videography, whatever, your aperture is basically how much light the lens is letting in at a certain time. So the lower that number is, if I'm at f2.8, like I am right now, the blurrier the background is. Now, the more zoomed in you are on a lens, the more blurry it's gonna be at a higher number, if that makes sense. I'm not gonna do a whole video on that. You can look it up. Put it short, your depth of field is probably one of the biggest indicators of cinematic almost because it's it's an easy way to get a really movie like look you see a lot of movies do a 50 millimeter prime lens at 1.8 or 1.5 1.4 whatever it be and that gives you whenever your subject's in focus a really blurry background here on this shot for example not everything is going to be blurry even though i'm at f 2.8 because i am wide so I'm at like 18 to 20 mil right now. The wider it's gonna be, the more it's in focus. But if I was zoomed in at like 70 at f2.8, the blur, the background's gonna be really blurry. So to make your sports videos really more cinematic, always shoot on the lowest aperture available. If you have a prime lens, that will give you that better depth of field at like a 1.8, like I said, on a 50. And if you're on an, a 70 to 200, use f2.8. My rule is I always go, for the most part, as shallow as possible in that depth of field and, and as low as I can on that f-stop because that's what people want to see. That's what separates your shots from broadcast when you're shooting sports. Always shoot on a lower f-stop to make your videos more cinematic. There's times where I use a higher f-stop if I'm shooting like a scenic of a stadium and I want everything to be in focus, or if I'm on a gimbal and I'm using autofocus and I don't want that focus to kind of get tricked a lot more. Or if I'm wider, for example, I will go a little higher. And if I'm shooting up from an angle and I want the ground to be in focus and I don't want it messing between like the subject and the ground, any situation where you want more stuff to be in focus, raise your f-stop. But if you want that shallow depth of field, lower your f-stop number. The second thing I want to talk about is your shutter speed. If you are unaware of what shutter speed is, it is basically how quick your camera is opening every frame. But simply put, it is going to control how much motion blur is in your image. Technically, if you want to achieve a cinematic look in sports, most movies are shot at 24 frames or 29 frames, and that is what is going to give you that movie look. So if we do the double your frame rate rule, your shutter speed should be one over 50 or 180 degree rule, whatever you wanna call it, your shutter speed will be about one over 50. The reason that is done is because that is what your eyes kind of resemble. Whenever you see something moving across a plane, that is what your eyes are going to see at that one over 50, roughly, you know what I mean? That is what a cinema look would be. So if you wanna be more cinematic, you shoot 24 frames a second, one over 50. But there are times where you don't do that. Now, obviously, sports is different. There's going to be quick moving subjects. The ball is flying around, ball's getting kicked. Athletes are moving fast. So if you want to shoot in some slow motion, like a higher frame rate, 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, you're gonna to need to up your shutter speed. If you're in 60 frames a second, shoot in one over 125. And furthermore, if you are shooting in 120 frames a second, which is an awesome look, you shoot in one over 250 shutter speed. Now, the higher your shutter speed goes, the less motion blur there's gonna be, but all of those numbers are in accord with that one double your frame rate rule and 180 degrees. Like I said earlier in the video, these things are changing constantly. There's another school of thought on this theory, and like, I used to be a part of this. I used to shoot with the thought of a really high shutter speed. Now, what are your benefits there? 
it's gonna give you a lot better slow motion. If you want a really good slow motion with less motion blur and you're really gonna be able to see the details of all the emotions in the face and the ball moving and, and the dirt kind of flying up, pads hitting hard, shooting, your, shooting a higher shutter speed, go to 90 degree rule, which would be one over 500 if you're shooting 120 frames a second. So you're basically doubling that, if that makes sense. But that is where this area kind of gets muddy. By technicality, if you want to do cinematic, you shoot like a movie because it resembles that shutter speed and that motion blur. But things change, social content changes. I don't care which one you want to do. Ultimately, you are going to shoot what you think looks best. Don't worry about what other people think. There are times for certain edits or like zoom in ball effects. I want less motion blur, so I'll put my shutter speed on 90 degrees, one over 500 when I'm shooting in 120. I did it during the baseball playoffs just to get less motion blur so I could zoom in on a, on, a, on a ball a little better. But for the most part, I stick to the 180 degree or double your frame rate rule. I think it looks good. It's simple. I don't worry about my shutter speed all that often, but simply put it, it's up to you. Let's talk about frame rate. And I know we kind of brushed on this already, but when you're shooting sports, I think it's important to make your videos look more cinematic, to mix up your frame rates. I don't think there's one that you should specifically set your mind to because there are moments in sports that are very slow where you don't need a high frame rate. And then there's moments that look really good with a high frame rate and you want to slow down. I think if you are mixing up your frame rates between the highest you can go, capture that action maybe in 120 frames a second, and then capture, you know, warmups, walking, pregame stuff in 24. Whatever your camera can do, I think to make your videos look more cinematic, mix that high frame rate with the low frame rate. Because there is a time for the low frame rate. You do get that more movie style look. That looks good mixing it in with the really cool crispy slow motion. Now, finally, let's talk about ISO. ISO is basically a digital exposure and it's going to add it to the image. The more ISO for the most part you have, the more grain there's going to be. Some cameras do this better than others. Mirrorless cameras are gonna be pretty good at it, especially in low light. And then your cinema cameras are gonna be pretty good at it. It. Your crop sensor cameras won't handle the higher ISOs as well as, as your full frame and your cinema cameras. Keep that in mind when you are adjusting this. For the most part, ISO is what I adjust all the time. I normally, like I said, shoot at the lowest f-stop available, which most of the time is f2 or f2.8 on the current setup I have. And then I keep my shutter at 180 degrees, double the frame rate whatever frame rate I'm in. So when I go on a higher frame rate, my ISO is going to have to be higher. When I'm on a lower frame rate, because the shutter speed is lower, that's gonna brighten the image. So my ISO is lower. I don't need as much ISO. You know, there are different theories on this. Some people shoot with the camera's native ISO. If you're new to this, and I don't even know really what a native ISO is. Normally it's like 800 or 1000, 1200, whatever. But apparently you're supposed to shoot with a native ISO. I don't pay attention to that. I just lower the ISO when I can because that's just less, less digital grain. This is the setting I adjust the most because I keep my shutter speed the same, keep my aperture as low as possible for the most part. Just a pro tip, I have a hotkey programmed in my camera right by the record button so you can adjust the ISO. For the most part, I'm adjusting my ISO all over. I have a cap on it. I don't, I, I don't like to go over like 1200 in normal settings. There are times in really low light at banquets or in tunnels where I'll have to go to like 2500. It happens. It's okay. I would say absolutely don't go over like 2500 on most cameras. But anyway, those are the main three components of, of what I think the settings that make your sports videos look cinematic. There are other things, of course, composition, using manual focus and adding depth to your shots. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, my DMs are always open at Pete Chalk on Instagram and you can also leave a comment below. I just wanted to go over the three main components of, of making your image, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. I hope y'all were able to gain some value from this video. If you are new here, please subscribe and hit the like button. It helps out a lot. Happy holidays, everyone, and I will see y'all in the next video. Maybe it's in the new year. I don't know.